This video is going to show you guys how to take apart a Traxxas 2.5 engine. Whether you want to clean it, rebuild it, or even just replace a broken part, this video is going to show you how to do it. And here's the supplies that you're going to need. You're going to need a 2 and 2.5 millimeter hex screwdriver, a 3 and 8 millimeter nut driver, a small flathead screwdriver, channel lock pliers, and a hammer. Preferably a rubber mallet, but you can get away with using just a regular hammer. For chemicals, you're going to need WD-40, bearing oil, and as an option, after run oil. For cleaning supplies, I highly suggest you use coffee filters. Coffee filters are lint free. If you don't have any, you can use a lint free disposable towel or paper towels. Extra cleaning supplies that you can use is toothpicks, q-tips, toothbrush, and wire brush. You're also going to need some small wire ties. And finally, you might need to buy some replacement parts if you need them. So now that you have all your supplies, let's go ahead and get this process started. But before I do, a quick note. It doesn't matter which Traxxas Nitro RC you have, removing the engine is nearly identical. For this video, I'm going to be using a Traxxas T-Max 2.5. So let's go ahead and get the engine out. The first thing I'm going to focus on is exhaust. There's two things you have to take care of depending on your model. Now if you have a screw that holds it to the chassis, go ahead and remove that screw and nut. If you don't, then all you have to focus on is removing the fuel line that attaches the exhaust to the fuel tank. The next thing you're going to want to do is locate your carburetor. Your carburetor is always going to be the piece that has your air filter connected to it. It's also going to be where the high speed needle is. You're going to want to go ahead and unplug the fuel line that connects to it and swing that off to the side. Next up, you're going to want to remove the four screws that keep the engine mounted to the RC. You'll notice that there's grooves in the side of the engine heat sink. These grooves allow you to have access to the screws that are all the way at the bottom. Now, if your tool isn't long enough to reach those screws, there is another method. However, if your tool is long enough, you're going to want to go ahead and remove these two screws and these two screws that are on the opposite side. So like I mentioned earlier, if you don't have a tool that's long enough to reach the four screws at the bottom of the engine, you can remove the engine by undoing the mount. The mount is what connects directly to the RC. There's always four screws that hold it onto the RC. However, if you do choose to remove the mount, remember, the mount is adjustable. So once you connect the engine back to the RC, you're going to have to readjust the mount so the engine correctly aligns with the spur gear that leads to the transmission. Now it's time to go ahead and undo the connector for your easy start system. It's only held in with two screws. Before you pull out the engine, there's one last thing holding it in. You're going to have to remove the arm that connects to the throttle. This little plastic head connects to the side of the carburetor. What you're going to want to do to remove it is get your flathead screwdriver and go ahead and pry it off. With that all taken care of, it's time to go ahead and remove the engine. You're going to grab it and tilt it towards the spur gear, which is where your transmission is. Lift back and up. And there you have it. Next up, it's time to go ahead and start removing the wires for the easy start system, if you have one. For the blue wire that leads to the glow plug, go ahead and pull it out. Next, for the motor, what you're going to want to do is remember which one's a positive and which one's a negative. You don't want to mix these wires up when you're plugging it back in. But to remove them, all you have to do is grab and pull. And now it's time to go ahead and remove the exhaust, along with the last wire for the easy start system. It's only held in with two screws. So before I remove the exhaust, I'm going to give you guys this fair warning. There's a good chance that some sort of fluid is going to be leaking out of the engine from this moment on. So just be careful not to get it all over your hands or over anything that can easily stain. Also, there's a really good chance that there's some fluid built up inside your exhaust. So be careful when you're tilting it like this because it could drip all over the place. With that being said, let's go ahead and continue. So to remove the exhaust, I'm going to go ahead and twist it back and forth and pull it back. And there we have it. We're going to go ahead and set that off to the side and focus on the carburetor. Now guys, before you remove this, you're going to have to find out a vital piece of information. In order to find that out, you're going to pull off the air filter. Now if the air filter does have a wire tie on there, you can easily just cut it off. With that out of the way, we can now see the angle of the carburetor. Now you're going to want to make a very, very strong mental node or Better yet, take a picture of the angle of the carburetor because with different models come different angles of where it sits at and you're going to want to know the exact angle so you can put it back on there exactly how it came off. With that being said, to take it off all you have to do is loosen this 3mm nut and it should slide right on out. 
Once you pull that off, go ahead and set it off to the side where it's not going to get dirty. Now it's time to focus on the starter. If you have a pull starter, it's going to have four screws. If you have the easy start system, it's only going to have three. Go ahead and remove those screws now. With the screws out, you can go ahead and rotate the easy start or pull starter and go ahead and pull this off. Now inside of here, you're going to notice the one-way bearing. Guys, be sure not to reverse this. As it is called the one-way bearing, it can only go in one direction. If you reverse it and put it in the wrong way, it's not going to let your engine start. So be sure that this goes in exactly the way that it came out. With that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and turn around to the clutch bell. First thing we need to do is remove this E-clip. To take it out, all you have to do is get a flathead screwdriver and pry it off. Once you carefully remove the E-clip, you're going to set that off to the side, pull off the washer, and finally the clutch bell. You'll notice that the clutch bell has a bearing on each side. And now it's time for the clutch shoes. To pull these off, all you have to do is grab them and slide them off. And now it's time to remove this nut. To remove it, you're going to use the channel lock pliers to hold the flywheel while you unscrew the nut. Once you get that nut out of the way, it's time to go ahead and remove the flywheel. The flywheel is not going to be so easy to pull off. What you're going to want to do is put it on a hard surface, get a rubber mallet, and gently tap it off. Once the flywheel is out of the way, you can set that off to the side, and now it's time to remove this cone washer. If it's too tight, you can go ahead and use a flathead screwdriver to pry it apart, but I like to go ahead and pry it apart from the bottom. Once you get this off, now it's time to really start working on the engine. So now it's time to go ahead and shift your attention to the top. First off, we're going to go ahead and remove the glow plug. After removing the glow plug, we're going to go ahead and remove the heat sink. Now in order to do this, we're going to have to undo five screws. These screws are at the bottom of these deep holes. So we're going to do this in a star pattern. One, two, three, four, five. And the same thing's going to be done when we put it back on. And now we can go ahead and remove the heat sink as well as a gasket that goes in between the two. Next, we're going to shift our attention to the very front and we're going to undo these four screws. Now it's time to go ahead and remove the back plate. I'm just going to put my finger on the shaft and then pull on the sides and it should pop right on off. And now we can go ahead and pull this piece out and set this off to the side. For the engine, next up we need to go ahead and remove the piston sleeve. Now for a lot of people this is a real big pain in the neck, but guys, there's a simple little trick to it. Now the traditional way of removing the piston sleeve is to go ahead and rotate it like this and you'll see that there is a ring in there. That ring is the base of the sleeve. With a soft plastic or wooden stick, you can go ahead and push on that and force it out. That doesn't always work and it's not the easiest things to do. Another method that I like to use is using a wire tie. Make sure that the piston is all the way down, then you're going to slide it through the top and out the exhaust. And then you're going to get the crankshaft and you're going to rotate it and it will push the sleeve up. Now you don't want to be too forceful with this because you don't want to warp this sleeve at all. Now if you do this enough, you'll see that there is a lip that's forming. What you want to do is remove the stick, get a flathead screwdriver, and very, very gently pry the sleeve out. You do not want to bend this at all. There's also a very noteworthy thing to say that you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that it has a notch. This has to go in a certain way. If your engine does not have a notch because it's one of the original engines, what you're going to want to do is before removing the sleeve, get a utility knife and you're going to make a very light scratch on the sleeve and on the block. That way you can line it up later. But with this out of the way, we can finally focus on removing the piston. To remove the piston, what you're going to want to do is make sure that it's all the way up. And when it's all the way up, you can see that it can come off from the crankshaft. So what you're going to want to do is hold it in that position and using flathead screwdriver, or better yet, just go ahead and use needle nose pliers, you're going to pry the base of the piston off just like that. Now, the piston should be able to slide right on through the top, and it should be very nice and loose. If it's not, you've got a lot of cleaning ahead of you. Next up, we can remove the crankshaft. This is not always an easy thing to do because this part can get really gummed up. But basically, all you have to do is push the base of it, and it should slide out through the front. And there you have it, guys. The last parts to remove are the bearings themselves. There's a bearing inside of there, and there's a bearing in the end.
Now these bearings that are inside of the engine block are very infamous for not being able to be pulled out. And there's a couple of methods out there for you to remove them. The first one is to go ahead and bring up the engine block up to 220 degrees Fahrenheit. And then you can just tap the bearings out. The other method is that there is actually tools made for removing them. I'm not going to be doing either. All I really wanted to see was if the bearings were in good enough shape. For this one on the end, it has a plastic covering. Now if you're very careful with an X-Acto knife, you can easily go ahead and pry off this plastic cover and then you can go ahead and see into the bearing, clean it out better, and then re-oil it. So the last thing to take care of is, of course, the piston. And you'll notice that there's a hole on each side of the piston head. And one of those holes, you'll see that there's a little wire sticking out. What you're going to want to do is get some needle nose pliers. You're going to grab that wire and you're going to pry it out and be very careful not to scratch the piston head. Because if you scratch the piston head, then you can pretty much throw this piston head away. And be very careful. but. Once you get this little wire out, which is pretty much like a spring load, you can go ahead and pull out this center bar. You're just going to push it on through the other side, just like that, and then the rest of the piston will fall apart. And now you can go ahead and clean it all the way. And there you have it guys, I finally took apart a Traxxas 2.5 engine. The only thing I didn't do was remove the bearings that are inside of the block. Now under closer inspection, they're actually in really good shape, so there's no point of going through all the hassles of removing them if I don't need to replace them. All they have to do is be cleaned a little bit and re-oiled. Now the other thing I didn't remove was the cylinder that holds the carburetor in place. If you need to clean in there, all you have to do is slide it out. Once you're done, slide it back in. Now this is the best time to check every one of your seals and make sure that they're in good condition. If they are overstretched or damaged in any way, you need to replace them. All bearings that are rusted and not working properly need to be replaced. As for everything that's inside of the engine, now is the time to go ahead and get the WD-40 with some coffee filters and wipe everything down very thoroughly. You want this to feel very, very smooth. Now, if you don't have coffee filters or a lint-free rag, you can use paper towels. Just be sure to use an air compressor at the end of it to make sure you don't leave any lint inside of the engine. Now, for the outside of the engine, if you see any dirt and grime like this, spray some WD-40 on there and hit it with a wire brush. Just be sure not to scratch any of the parts that are inside of the engine where fuel is going to be touching. Also, don't scratch up any of the seals of where parts are going to be connecting to each other. If you scratch those up, it's going to allow air into the engine or it's going to let the engine leak and you don't want to do that. But once everything is cleaned up, replaced and taken care of, it's time to go ahead and reassemble the engine. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is the piston. I'm going to go ahead and line up the arm. That way the holes line up just right. I'm going to get the peg and I'm going to get the one with the solid end and slide that right on through. And now as soon as that's pushed down all the way, I'm going to get this little metal wire and I'm going to go ahead and push it in there. This can be a little bit tricky, but if you are lucky, you can get this in without too much trouble. There you go. And you want to make sure that it's in there all the way. So get a toothpick and make sure that it's set in there just right. Now, before we go on any further, I want to go ahead and let you guys know, any metal parts that are touching inside of the engine need to be coated with after run oil or a little bit of WD-40. It doesn't matter which one, but you cannot have metal on metal. There has to be some kind of lubrication in between all the parts. So let's go ahead and continue. So one of the methods that I like to go ahead and use in order to coat everything with WD-40 or after run oil is I just put it on a Q-tip and then I just rub it over the surface I know is going to have contact with other metal. And that's what I've done with all the parts that I'm about to put together. So next thing I need to do is get the crankshaft. I'm going to go ahead and slide it back in there. The bearings have already been re-oiled and taken care of, so this should go in there without a problem. There we go. And yes, it spins very, very beautifully. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and put that notch at the top, and I'm gonna go ahead and slide in the piston. Now, the piston is gonna go in this way. I know that because this slot goes back towards the carburetor. So we're just gonna 
drop that in there and then we're going to put that onto this arm. Once you get it on there, it's time to go ahead and install the sleeve. Now remember, go ahead and line up that notch with the one that's on the block. You're going to make sure that the piston is at the top position and then you're going to go ahead and slide this all the way down. You don't want to force it in, you want to go ahead and ease it in. Like I said, you don't want to damage any of these parts at all. Push that all the way down, make sure it's lined up, and this should spin very, very easily. Now if it's not spinning easily, make sure that you don't have it pushed up, because as you can see, the base of the piston can hit the inside of the engine block. So pull back on the crankshaft while you turn it to make sure that, as you can see, it turns beautifully. Next up, I'm gonna go ahead and slide the piston all the way down, and then I'm gonna grab this part. As you can see, this part has two notches, one on each side. It doesn't really matter which notch you use, but you're gonna use that notch to put it over the peg that hooks up to the piston, just like that. Now, this is a shaft that hooks up to your starter, so when you use a pulley or even an easy start, this is what rotates the piston to get it started. Now I'm going to go ahead and get the back plate, and as you can see, the back plate has these two little notches. That's the top. So I'm going to slide the shaft right into the bushing and push this all the way down, just like that. And I'm going to attach the four screws that hold it in place. I'm going to tighten it down in a star pattern. So upper right, bottom left, bottom right, upper left. Once that's taken care of, you're going to go ahead and turn the crankshaft. Now if you have enough oil in there, it's going to make a little thumping noise when you turn it. And as you can hear it, it's perfectly fine. Now it's time to go ahead and install the heat sink. First thing I'm going to do is get the gasket, put that over just like that, and then I'm going to line this up. Now you can see that the pattern is pretty unique, so you can't really align this up in any other way. So I'm going to slide that into position, and I'm going to install the five screws that hold them in. Now just like with the back plate, I'm going to do it in a star pattern. So one, two, three, four, five, and then I'm going to repeat it one more time, one, two, three, four, five. After that, it's time to go ahead and install the glow plug. But before you do, make sure that it has this little metal ring before you put it in. Now a quick note, before you install the glow plug, if you want to, you can put a couple of drops of after-run oil in there or a quick spray of WD-40, just to help with lubrication. Now it's on to the carburetor. Now like I told you, you better install this exactly the same way as you pulled it off. Just go and slide in position, push it all the way down, make sure that it is all the way down, and then you're going to adjust it to what it was before. Once you have it to the right adjustment, then you're just going to go ahead and tighten this 3mm nut. Once that's taken care of, you can go ahead and get the air filter, pop that back on, and it's time to move on to the starter. Now remember that one-way bearing needs to go on exactly the way it was before you took it off. So we're going to line that up, Slide that down, and then we're going to use the three or four screws to go ahead and reattach your puller or easy start. Once that's taken care of, you can give a little bit of sigh of relief because now nothing can get into your engine. Now it's time to move on to the clutch. We're going to start off by this cone washer, push that all the way down, get the flywheel, push that all the way down, and then we're going to attach this nut. Now while you tighten the nut down, you're going to want to hold the flywheel in place with the channel lock pliers. Once that's taken care of, then you're going to go ahead and get the clutch shoes and you're going to install them just like this. All you have to do is slide them back on, followed by the clutch bell. Make sure that the bearing is on each side. Push that all the way down, then we're going to get the washer, push that on, and then we're going to install the E-clip. With that taken care of, now we can go ahead and reattach the exhaust. Now when you're reattaching the exhaust, just remember to attach the easy start back to it. Once the exhaust is reinstalled, I can go ahead and plug in all the other wires for the easy start. I'm going to go ahead and put the negative and positive back onto the motor, and then I'm going to plug in the glow plug wire. And now with that taken care of, we can reinstall this back onto the RC. So before you slide the engine back in, there's a couple of things you should do first. First of all, make sure that the throttle arm is in the right position. If it isn't, you're going to have to pull the engine back out just to get it in the right position. Next, put all four of the screws back into the engine before you slide it back into position. Otherwise, you're going to have one heck of a hard time pushing those screws all the way down in there to get them installed. So, all you have to do is really slide the engine back into place. It really shouldn't take that much effort. Once the engine's all the way in there, go ahead and tighten the four screws that hold it in place. 
Next up, you're going to want to reattach the throttle arm back to the carburetor. So we're going to line this up just right, and with the flathead screwdriver, we're going to guide it right into position, and then pop it on. Now it's time to reconnect the fuel line. Now remember, the fuel line that you're going to need is the one that attaches to the bottom of the gas tank, not the top. The one that attaches to the top goes to the exhaust. So we're just going to go ahead and line that up and plug it in. And finally, you're going to go ahead and get the fuel line that comes out of the top of your gas tank and plug that back into your exhaust. You can also attach the exhaust back to the chassis if you need to and reattach the connector for your easy start back to the RC. And the last thing you need to be aware of is moving back the protective sleeves for the fuel line in the areas that need protection. With the engine reinstalled, I am finally done. Guys, I hope this video helped you out in understanding what it takes to rebuild or clean your engine. Now there's a quick note. I do realize I'm missing a rubber boot on my carburetor, but guys, to rebuild a carburetor, well that's a different video. Either way, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did.